G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder with Mags and today we're on board the LA-174 and we have a special guest. Today's battle I'm flying out with the Orange Doom. Now there was a couple of things about this particular battle. The first one, we're not actually running live comms in this battle. Neither one of us are talking to one another. There is no Skype, there is no TeamSpeak running in the background. Any communication we have, although we don't really have any through the match, is entirely through the chat system. Now the second thing is that this was actually mine and Orange's first time flying out the LA-174 or the LA-15. They both share exactly the same flight model in patch 1.53 and it's had a lot of changes. Now the first thing that struck me is the web time. You'll notice I'm on 112% throttle right now and I've been on 112 basically since I got wheels off the ground at this point and I'm not having any overheating issues. In fact, the engine hasn't even hit amber. In the old LA-174 flight model, this thing would damn near be getting ready to explode from overheating at this point. The new LA-15 slash LA-174 flight model, however, doesn't seem to care. In fact, I ride the web really hard this entire match, and I never have a problem with it overheating. The second thing I noticed was the overall maneuverability. The aircraft seems a lot more responsive on its controls now. It doesn't seem to be locking its controls at high speeds. Everything about the plane seems to be improved. But I'll take the opportunity to talk more about the flight model in just a moment. We're about to go into combat. Now for those of you who have watched both my channel and Orange's channel will know we both have significantly different ways of flying. My style tends to be more slow, more calculated, uh, more methodical. I tend to get altitude, I tend to want to pick out key targets and eliminate them, particularly targets that are trying to engage teammates. Orange tends to be hyper aggressive, going straight at the enemy's throat and trying to, well basically do a shock and awe style of attack. So in the course of this fight, you're going to see the LA-174 flown in two completely different ways. Now I've come up on my first target, I was originally going to go for a Banshee, but a Meteor F4 Longwing, very dangerous aircraft, presented itself first. Take the lead and put my 23mm fire straight into the left hand engine. Pull straight up to take altitude, ready to re-engage. And it's at this point that I realise I've actually lost Orange. He's thrown himself deep in the fight, but I can see from the bottom right hand side of the screen, he is engaged. I can now see the target he's taken out. He is my wingman, so I'm going to back off from the Meteor, and I'm going to move over and try and assist him. As at this time, it does look like he's still engaged with two aircraft after taking out a third. In hindsight at this point, I should have stayed on the Meteor I was on. Not only did I not get the kill for that particular aircraft, I also didn't get an assist for it, and as it turned out, Orange had just caused both of the opposing aircraft to blow all their energy and then taken his 174 straight into the vertical and managed to lose them both anyway. And that was actually one of the other things I've noticed with the flight model. The LA-174's energy retention in the vertical is much better than it was, along with everything else. But we have three fighters ahead of us. Orange has dove down to engage the first. He's taken a stab at a Meteor that looks like it's banked out of his way and managed to avoid his gun, so I'll take a dive on it as well. As he goes back into the vertical to regain energy to re-engage his attack, I make my pass through. Unfortunately, don't give quite enough lead here, so I miss the shot, keep the speed on, and take the LA-174 straight into the vertical myself to regain my altitude to re-engage my attack. Now, you'll notice the overspeed on the wings then. If I was flying the old flight model, the LA-174 would have torn off its own wings in that particular moment. With the old flight model, speeds beyond 920 km an hour were generally lethal in this particular aircraft. Now I've taken this plane out to around 1,000 kilometers an hour. It's not particularly comfortable when it gets there, but it won't rip its wings off anymore. So, re-diving in, and we've got a different Meteor this time. It's another Meteor F4 Longwing. Shots through. Now, I don't know entirely what I hit there, but it looks like he lost control, banking too hard, and there we go, my first kill for the match. Once again, taking all the speed from the dive and putting it into the climb to retake altitude so I can get above my next target and get ready to re-engage. And I'm looking at that F2H behind us. That Banshee is looking very tasty. Now, I've just realized it sounded like I said the LA-174 won't tear off its wings. That's actually incorrect. It will. But you can now take it out to at least 1,000 kilometers an hour. And providing you aren't pulling any excessive Gs or really any Gs at all during that high-speed moment, the aircraft will stay intact. That being said, at this point I've never taken the aircraft beyond about 1,002 kilometers an hour and it was shaking rather hard. I expect the wing break point would not be far behind that. So, keeping in mind how much I oversped last time going into a dive, this time deploy the air brakes and dive almost vertically straight on the Banshee as it's banking left from the forest. Take the lead, critical strike to the right wing, tips the Banshee over at high speed at low altitude and the plane goes straight into the forest and that's my second kill of the match. Once again, throttles wide open, pull back into the vertical, gain as much altitude as I can, ready to engage. But at this point, I've only just come to realize there's actually only two enemy aircraft remaining. 
the entire enemy team has been pulled apart. So, as we cruise back towards the rest of our team trying to find these last two aircraft, now seems like the perfect time to talk about the real 174 LA-15 in comparison to the one we see in game, and at least the problems that I had with its old flight model. Historically, the LA-174 or the LA-15, they're both the same aircraft, the LA-174 is the prototype of the 15, went into development at exactly the same time as the first MiG-15. Now, I'm not talking about the MiG-15 biz that you see in game at top tier, I'm talking about the first 15. And these two aircraft were in direct competition with one another to become the Soviet Union's next generation fighter, primary fighter. And both of them performed extremely well in the tests. The MiG-15 generally was faster and had a higher climb rate. The LA-174, however, had lower wing loading and was vastly more maneuverable than the MiG in a fight. It was actually a better fighter. The MiG was a vastly better interceptor. But overall, these two planes performed very similarly to one another. And yet that was never the case with the flight models that were available in War Thunder. The LA-174, LA-15 in War Thunder previous to now couldn't manoeuvre worth a damn. It was constantly suffering from control surface stiffening. It was slow. It suffered massive engine overheating issues at all times. The aircraft's overspeed was 920 km an hour, which incidentally was also the speed that it ripped its own wings off. It was in absolutely no way an equivalent to the MiG-15, like it historically was. And then patch 1.53 comes around, the new flight model comes along, and all of a sudden that's exactly what it is. It is very much the equivalent of the MiG-15 now. The MiG is still faster and has a higher climb rate, but the LA-15-174 is now extremely dangerous in a dogfight. And while I haven't tested the MiG versus the 174 directly yet, I would say it would give it a good run for its money. So, was this a buff to its flight model or was it a fix to its flight model? I'm tending to lean towards fix myself. The aircraft just never felt like what I expected the 174 LA-15 should feel like, and now it very much does. That being said, it means that it can no longer carry the lower BR that it once had. If this aircraft is going to perform on a level with the MiG-15, it must be matched with the same BR as the MiG-15. And should Gaijin ever get around to actually fixing the matchmaking at Aero 5, it needs to face opponents appropriate for this level of performance. So results for the match. Second place for the team with two kills. Orange takes first with three and one. I knew I should have taken down that Meteor. We could have had three apiece. 43,900 silver lines for the match and 2,083 research points, although that has been reduced because I'm researching an Era 3 aircraft with an Era 5 aircraft. So all in all, I'm rather impressed with the LA-15, LA-174's new flight model. Honestly, I think you have to be very careful of this thing now. If you see them in battle, don't assume you're going to be able to outmaneuver them. They are vastly more dangerous. So anyways, ladies and gents, a big shout out to Orange Doom for coming along for this particular ride. To everybody else, click like if you do. Subscribe if you want to see more. Fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies. Mm -hmm.